H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus. One-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. into that parts I'm not able to see that but once you, if you install your browser mode maybe in the next class I will show you that it will highlight I mean in the previous class I had shown you right it will highlight as Hadoop localhost and the next one is input stream is equal to input stream new buffered input stream so it is reading your input stream that was given in your local path which is home Gita programs w count so it is reading all the text or messages that were written in w count file so for that I am using an buffered input stream so buffered input stream is like a class which is used to read data from my input stream and the next one is I have to connect with my file system to talk anything with my HDFS. So for that I am creating an object called as file system for my file system and I am getting both the URI and my configuration properties. And the next command is output stream where I am giving my target path. So my target path is HDFS path right. So here I am giving it as uh, HDFS localhost user Hadoop in Hadoop 1.0.3 and then WC count. So once I execute this program there will be a file that will get created called as WC input into this particular path. So probably I will have that. Let me delete it once. Or else let me do one thing. So I'm just deleting this command before I execute that. Uh, if at all you have this file already available it will throw an error stating that file already exists so at that time you have to delete that file or maybe you can give a new name so that it will give, doesn't give any conflicts okay so I'm deleting this file right now so okay successful deleted that particular file so I should be able to see that so okay fine well and good I don't have that file so and the next step is progress so it will just I mean progress is just a function which is uh, which tells you whether uh, it's going to be progressed or not while executing your program and then this try command is just uh, it's copying the bytes from my input stream to output stream and finally once everything has been copied I'm closing by stream so that's what pretty much about this command and before you run this command get all your libraries imported okay this is important thing so all the common libraries that you have to import here is these things maybe you can use this recording to import all these things but if at all you want to import any library here just go to build path configure build path and then go to libraries add external jars and then select all these things till here and then just click on OK such that it will get imported into your under your reference libraries ok so I'm not doing it right now because I have it already ok but before you run your command just import all these libraries 
into your any of your Java programs. Maybe in your MapReduce also you are going to write some programs, right? At that moment as well, you have to import all these libraries. Or else you will get or you, it will throw some errors. So let's try running this. So first of all, if I want to run this program, I have to export my jar file, right? So for that, I am giving a right click on my HDFS copy, give the export and then select the jar file which that needs to be exported and then give a next HDFS copy A. Yeah. So here is the jar file name that I am giving. So it is the same as my class name as well. So or maybe you can give your own jar name as well. It's not mandated that it should be same as your class name. And then go to next and again next. And now select the class for which you are creating the jar. So this is my class name, right? HDFS for PA. Give OK on this and then finish. Okay. So now I am ready to run it on my terminal, right? So the command that is used to run a particular jar file is Hadoop jar, jar name and then class name. So here I have to give it as Hadoop jar what is my jar name hdfs copy a dot jar and then my class name right so this I can directly give it over there So the command has been executed now. Now I am able to see my WC input, right? So it has been created and the size of this file is 0.2 KB and everything is same again, replication factor and box size. It has given the modification date and time. Let's see, let's open and see this file whether the same contents have been copied or not. This is a sample word count program which is the first program in this tutorial. It counts the number of words etc etc etc. Okay. So let's go to our input path. So what we had given in my program is home Gita programs WC count. So this is what I have in my W count in my local file system, right? So it is very well same. Uh, shit. One second, guys. Right. It is very well same with my HDFS, right? So this is the same word count and everything is same. So this is how you go with a Java program. So let's see. We have a question here. Yeah, uh, most of the times the best suggested way is go through command prompt itself because uh, for a single, uh, yeah, I got you, yeah, for a single uh, execution to occur, do I actually need to write a big, a very huge Java program like this just to copy a single file? Do I need to write all these things? No, right? It's not suggestible. You have this way, but it is not suggestible, right? I am just trying to show you what all different ways we have to copy a file or to do a particular operation. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one more we have a question. Yeah, there is no particular setup to install all these things. I mean, just go and download Eclipse so that would be sufficient for you to interact with HDFS. Just download Eclipse and as I showed you, create a 
excuse me yeah create a path where such that you can write your program maybe if you you had seen here right i had created a project and then i had created a class such that i can write my program here so once it is done just export your jar file and directly you can run your jar file in your terminal with the above command hadoop jar jar name and then class name that will suffice our requirements yes yeah in the same way i have few other programs as well so this is same as my mkdir command so mkdir command will create a directory in my hdfs at a particular path right so for the same thing i had a java program which is creating a directory so i am creating a directory test2 at my user location so guys you can very well practice all these things i will share you these programs so again importing and everything will be same you can have all the files in common for all your programs so as i told you these steps are very common right for all the things the configuration uri and file system so all these are common so only thing that will change is like whatever you want to do if it's a copy from local you will have the input and output paths if it's a make directory you will have just a make directory command with my file system that's it and then it will this program will show you or read a particular path here i had given a path called as hadoop inst hadoop 1.0.3 customers so if i run this command in my terminal it will show you all the contents that were available in my customers file so I have a customers file here right so it contains some information so all this information will be displayed on my terminal so that's it so the same command to read is ls right hadoop fs ls so if i give the command hadoop fs ls user hadoop in hadoop 1.0.3 customers it will show you the same thing so this is another way of getting that information okay so that's what pretty much about today's class guys just let me know if you have any questions on this yeah okay so some of the guys are requesting to share that uh, all the three sites dot xmls so that they can just have a quick compare of that yeah sure definitely i will share you those three xmls files as well yeah masters and slaves guys you don't need to edit your master or slave files because we are installing hadoop in a sudo distributed mode right so my master is the same system and slave is also a same system right so the default configuration will suffice you if at all you are going to install your hadoop in a distributed mode then only you will give all the ips of other machines in your different sites and the setup will be quite different from the document which i had shared with you okay so this document is used to install hadoop only in sudo distributed mode yes and the masters and slaves will be empty okay so someone wants to see what is there okay okay one second let me log in so in my core site right okay right this is what you have in the core site dot xml okay aha uh -huh. you want to see this app hadoop tem okay let me go into this
So okay, you have the DFS and MapRed. So these two files or these two directories are important and mandatory as well. Okay, you should be able to see all these two directories. If at all you are not able to see any one of them means you had missed out some step or maybe you had given some wrong command while installing. So just have a quick check on what the things you had done. Yes. So in my map right, you should have it as local. Yes, yes, no problem. You have you can have a check on it. Right. Well, you can see this masters and slaves, they should be empty. Maybe you can try with uh, giving that SSH command to test whether you are able to connect to your local host and all those things as well. Once if you are confirmed about those things, then the masters and slaves, is not. it is not required to disturb those two directories. The only three things that you have to touch it is coresite.xml, mapred and hdfsite.xml. Along with that, you have Hadoop environment.sh and bash rc files. Those two needs to have your Java Java path, right? Yes. So that's what you have to touch. Okay. Yeah, you can try it. No problem. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Okay, any other questions guys before we like wrap, wrap up for today? Okay. Fine. Okay, tomorrow we are not going to have the class because today, tomorrow I am having a client visit and I have to leave my office very early. So probably I will not be able to come to tomorrow's session. Day after tomorrow at the same time you can use the same link. Maybe that day we can have maybe one and a half session or something like that like today. So that we can cover some more topics. Yes. Yes. So from day after tomorrow it is important for you guys to understand all the things. We are at the core heart of our Hadoop systems from day after tomorrow it, which is MapReduce. Yes. Okay guys and do remember you stop your cluster before you are quitting out or shutting out, shutting down your VMware. Okay or else it will throw some errors. Yes. Okay guys, thank you all for joining today's session. Yes, we will meet day after tomorrow at the same time. Good night guys. Yes, bye.